Hello and welcome to a new video about the magnetic field. Today we want to talk about how to get rid of magnetic fields. Now that we know that in ferromagnetic materials there will be something left yeah, so of the magnetism. Maybe I don't want that. Or it sticks somewhere and there's a source of a magnetic field. I, can, can, I don't need a magnetic field. I, I want to get rid of this magnetization of a ferromagnetic material. Yeah? How to do this? How to do this? Well, one, one thing which is working pretty nice, I would say, is, is heating it up. Right? Heating it up. There is a, a certain temperature, it's called Curie temperature, and suddenly there is no magnetism anymore. Yeah? So that's first method. Yeah. Heat up above the Curie temperature. Think about think about it that way. Yeah? There are the small. Think about them as small li little elementar magnets, and the temperature. This is uh, you know uh, chittery. It's chittering of the atoms inside, and once this chittering is getting too much, yeah, those little uh, elementar magnets, they will simply shaken, uh, shaken too much and will lose orientation. Uh, before I magnetized it, I gave them orientation uh, as good as I could, depending on the crystal structure, and if the heat is getting more, they are shaking and, well, there is no orientation anymore, so no macroscopic magnetization. Okay, so heat up above Curie temperature. So what is the Curie temperature? Let's have. Uh, so if we have cobalt, for instance, the Curie temperature is about 1,150 degrees Celsius. Uh, pretty high, right? Iron. We are at 768 degrees Celsius. Much smaller, right? And nickel is 360 degrees Celsius. So we see that's quite a range. Huh? So this Curie temperature really have to look up. There are ferrites and so on. There are from there. There are a lot of uh, 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 ferromagnetic materials. A lot of. There are some ferromagnetic materials, but they all have their Curie temperature. Once you go above this, they are not melted. Huh? Not melted. Iron is not melting at 768 degrees Celsius, for instance. Iron is melting somewhere at 1600, I think. I don't remember anymore. But much more. Huh? So it's, it's glowing. Oh, it's glowing. It's hot. Yeah, of course. Yeah, but magnetism, bye-bye. Okay. Second possibility, which has also something to do with our little element. Second, yeah, as a big, big shake. <laughs> a big shake. Yeah. It's a big shake, it's a big shake. If you're constantly hitting and it's getting always, always, you know, vibration, big shake. And vibration. Huh? Then also those little magnets they lose the orientation. Yeah? Think about every time you hit this magnet, they will lose a little bit. Mm -hmm. Some of them are falling off the grid. Yeah? And if you have done it too often, yeah, then the orientation is almost gone. This is why don't slam your kitchen doors of your kitchen yeah, if they are using magnets. Because they will always hit and with every hit the magnet will get not that strong, yeah, weaker. And in the end you will lose the magnetism. Depends a little bit on the material of course because those neodym 
things mm, they will break uh, before you really get rid of, of, of the magnetism by vibrating it. Uh. And then a third possibility would be alternating fields. With descending, is this written correct? Ah, descending uh, strength. So what does this mean? Let's say we have our our hysteresis curve, and we are magnetized somehow. So we have H here, field strength, flux density, and we start somewhere here. Start here, then because we have an alternating field, we will go down here, like that, and up here. And then we will go up, and since it's descending strength, yeah. We will not go up completely, but end up here somewhere. Uh, maybe we have started here, end up here. Next round, next round, next round, and then we are we are gone. Uh, so that's it, that's the... That's one possibility. Huh? To use alternating fields and, le and let it get smaller. Then you trick this hysteresis curve. Huh? You just, if you turn just off the field, huh? then there will be remnants. We have, we have established this. Uh, if you just turn out the field off, there will be remnants. But once you get smaller, 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 nothing is left. Right? So you trick this. This was done in, for, you know, when this, there were these this tube monitors, uh, they, they had a, a, a knob down there behind a, a flap, usually. And you pressed it, it was labeled Degauss. And you pressed it, then it was good. The, the, the picture was shaking like Degauss. You hear the sound and so on. This was exactly this. Because why was this necessary? Because in those tubes you had an acceleration grid before. And there were this electron beam, which was accelerated by this acceleration grid, and the acceleration grid was done with some magnetizable material. And because we have the earth magnetic field and so on, this magnetizable material was magnetized. And there is also forces, we will talk about forces in the magnetic field, there's also forces on move charges. The Lorentz force is called, and electron beam is a move charge. I mean, there are electrons and they are shooting in a beam, yeah? so they are moving. All right? And once this screen is getting magnetized, then this electron beam did not hit exactly where it should hit. Yeah? And then it hit some a little bit off. Yeah? It did not hit, I don't know, the red pixel, it hit a little green and a little red. Yeah? So the colors really looked awful yeah? once you have a magnetized screen. It was wrong colors simply. Strange, yeah, psychedelic, yeah, but awful. Yeah. So you press the gauze, where everything was shaking. This was performed, and the picture was perfect again. As perfect now with this DFT monitors, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. So demagnetize. We see well, quite some effort, right? So why don't prevent? Why don't prevent to, to, to demagnetize or to, why don't prevent the magnetization in the first place? Well, let's talk about shielding because actually that is what we had to do if we want to 
protect something from being magnetized, we have to shield the magnetic field somehow. Yeah? In the electric field, what we have, we have done, we said, okay, we have uh, some cut conductive material, and inside a conductive material, there is no electric field, because otherwise the, the charges would flow. Yeah? And, and internally, there is no field. And even if I have a hole inside this uh, conductive material, there is no field inside this hole. So shielding was pretty easy. Now let's have a look at it. What it is the, the, the counterpart of conductive material, of electric conductive material? Ferromagnetic material. Ferromagnetic material is somehow leading the magnetic field. So let's say we have here the magnetic field here. Uh -huh. Let's draw a middle one. And this shall be the ferromagnetic material. Right? So this was a homogeneous field before, and we start up here and bend a little bit towards this ferromagnetic material. Huh? This is the deformation which is caused by this ferromagnetic material of the of the before of the field which was before straight. Let's say. Now this line here we are already touching. We are already entering a little bit there yeah, and resurface here. This one line, go into, going here, going out. This one line, going in here, following here, going out. Next line, here, going out. Next line. And now there's not enough room. There's not enough room for this line to go through, through the iron. Because actually this iron or this ferromagnetic material, there is, there is saturation, right? So this is already saturated. So it doesn't really matter if this field line goes here this way around because the saturation is too high so it will choose a path which is not that stressful let's say and it's looking like that and this line will go like here yeah? this line here and so on well, this line we will keep inside this is this is direct so this is actually how this will look like in a shielded environment. Doesn't look perfect, I must say. But all right. We can imagine how it's meant to be. Yeah. This would how a ferromagnetic material is acting inside a magnetic field. Because here the field lines are very close, the saturation is here, and the only thing we have managed, hmm, the only thing we have managed is that the field strength inside here, yeah, so the flux density inside here, is not that high anymore, but it's still there. Yeah. This here is called passive shielding. It's passive. Shielding. We don't have to do anything, just use some ferromagnetic material. So we're using ferromagnetic material material. And we have we have some hollow space. inside and we have a field weakening but nothing more huh? so we weak the shield field 
Right? That's passive shielding. And there's also active shielding. And we said, okay, we want to get rid of an outer magnetic field. This has of some form. Wow. Some form. And now we make a super trick. Yeah, we put here some wires, distribute them somehow, local, localize them, and then we are sending through, boom, boom, maybe like that, some currents. Yeah? And each current is surrounding itself with a magnetic field. This current is going inside here, yeah? this is coming out, this is coming out, this is going inside, inside out. So all which is inside, they will surround themselves with magnetic fields going in this direction. The other ones surround themselves with magnetic fields going in this direction. And here, somewhere, I have an overlapping of this field, 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 of this field and the outer magnetic field I want to shield. Okay? And then, here comes the tricky part, I have to select my current strength, my current directions, my orientation, so my physical places where the current are flowing, in a certain way, so that at some areas there is really no field left. Yeah, that all the fields superpose each other that way, that there is no field left. Cannot be too hard, right? You know, when something sounds easy and you try to do it, then usually you see it's not that easy because in the details lays the, the, the trouble. This does not even sound easy. This is not easy. This is absolutely not easy. Yeah? It's working, but it's very tricky and it's not that cheap. Yeah? Because, you know, there's a lot of experimenting and so on. Yeah? This is active shielding here. Active shielding, this is called. I call it tricky. Tricky. Clever tricky arrangement. of current uh, to partially delete a magnetic field with the field field of the currents. Shielding magnetic fields, shielding electrical field, lose, use a tin foil yeah, and cover this in tin foil. Huh? <laughs> shielding magnetic fields, mm, difficult. This is why we had to talk about demagnetization. So that's the way it is. Yeah. So that we are talking about forces. Yeah, we're talking about forces. The next force we are talking about is the force why a magnet is sticking to a ferromagnetic material. Hmm, I think you know the effect. Yeah, You use a magnet, book, and it's here. Yeah. You see this? No, of course not. Yeah. Doesn't really matter. Here, stick. It's stick, 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 stick. Yeah. Why? Yeah. How, how good? Yeah. What is the force behind? We'll see you next video. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.